joined yeah. by Chris. Chris Vaughn is uh, a Stevens University player. He's played in the AVP, the NVA, and FIVB Snow Volleyball. So basically all of the elements. Chris, how you doing? Tell us a little bit about yourself and uh, what's going on with your day-to-day now that you're in quarantine. I'm good. I'm good. Good to be interacting with other anyone other than my roommate and uh, <laughs> my girlfriend a little bit. It's kind of fun to see some other faces, you know. I'm good. I'm hanging in there. I'm, I'm trying to move around as much as I can while I'm cooped up in my house. Um, it is what it is. You know, we're quarantined. We're, we're making the best out of it over here. So first of all, I met you on the bleachers at Stevens when you were a senior in high school. You were watching the Stevens alumni game and you were like 18 years old <laughs> coming from South Jersey. And then, Is that real? Is that really where you met me? <laughs> that's true story, yeah. You were kind of just hanging out watching. It was kind of like, I guess, like an unofficial recruiting visit for you. So that was you know, uh, probably 2014-ish. I graduated high school in 2012. So, yeah, so probably 2012. Yeah, now, like, totally transformation six, seven years later, we're talking about, like, all these different avenues of volleyball. Obviously, one of the marquee uh, members of Team Freedom. So I, I just want everybody to understand who they're listening to and kind of how these journeys took place as quick as you can. Kind of like, you know, did they just happen or were you right. seeking them? You know, kind of just chat a little bit about that. I'll give you a quick synopsis as quick as I can of my volleyball sure. life. My parents played, so I kind of picked it up from them. So I've kind of been around it a little bit. You know, my parents did pick up, nothing serious. Then at one point, my sister played in high school, but there was still no boys volleyball at my high school. So we found out about a boys uh club in, in South Jersey called South Jersey Volleyball Club. And I, you know, enjoyed it as much as I could. Um, it's a pretty big club, so you don't get as much one-on-one -on -one as I think I was hoping for. And, and the competitive, you know, fight isn't isn't quite as there as, as I would like it to be. There's a group of us that we really started, like, you know, going after it in the summers a little bit to get better. We were meeting with uh, Quan Nguyen. We wanted to go for a little bit more serious club volleyball. This was my junior year of high school now. We started our own club called Quandomania Volleyball, and that consisted of me, Eric Song, John Cunningham, Kyle Farley, Kyle Potiger, uh, Dan Christmas, Taylor Arcaney, and Kevin Vil Vilela. I think that's how you say the last name. Shout out to Kevin. Yeah, huge shout to Kev there. Um, <laughs> so we started that on our own, and we were pretty successful my junior year, and, and that's when I really, we really started like figuring out that we were good at volleyball. I didn't have volleyball in high school, so I was kind of like that weird kid that everyone was like, do you really play volleyball? I don't know. I wanted to play in college, but there's not a lot of engineering in volleyball schools. So Stevens was pretty much my main option. And if I could get in there, then I, I would go. I went there and ended up liberoing uh, my first season oh. as a freshman. I uh, kind of remembered how to hit uh, <laughs> during, and probably learned some during the summer. Uh, when I was playing a lot of beach volleyball. Somebody just said, oh, wow, when you said I was a libero my freshman year. <laughs> I've known Chris for a long time, and he's always, like, been, uh, he's always been a spiker. Like, I don't think a lot of people know that. So, Amable, actually, at the time, he called me the night before uh, one of the biggest matches of that season. I think it was either uh, the quarterfinals or the semis of the national championship. That was my junior year. He goes, I think we're going to go with, uh, with Vaughn at Lib. And I was like, wait, what? <laughs> I was so confused. <laughs> this was like for a really big match. And he was like, yeah, I mean, he statistically just, you know, is the, is, is the guy. All right. So I'll give you a rundown of that. So that, that yeah, whole please. junior season, that was for the, we were hosting the net NCAAs. Um, that whole junior season, me, Dave Evans and Tim Ferreter were splitting time at outside. We were all Americans previously. So it seemed, you know, pretty fair that we split. And we actually had Gabe Shankweiler too. Um, who was also an All-American. But Gabe got injured at the beginning of the season. So scratch Gabe, but three of us split time at outside. So then leading to the finals, they made the decision, or the, the playoffs, they made the decision that Dave and Tim were going to be the OH1 and OH2. And I was kind of re ready to hop in. Semi-final match, Dylan Schlosser was at Libero our whole season. And he was kind of struggling a little bit. I think it was game four when they put me in and we were like down. Um, and then they just let me, left me in for the finals too. So. That's what it was. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, I think that that's awesome because we talk so much as volleyball coaches and volleyball minds about young volleyball players who are outside hitters, let's say. But they always come to me and they go, you know, coach, I'm only 5'7 or 5'8. Uh, so I think I'm going to have to be a libero in college. So I don't want to be an outside anymore. And I always, I, I always found that so fascinating. An outside hitter is a libero. Like, that position is so similar. A libero transitioning to be an outside would be far more difficult. But an outside trying to become a libero, it's, I mean, 
you're serve receiving six rotations if you're a six rotation player. You're playing defense, you're serving, you're doing all the other elements. You don't know this, Chris, but I've actually told that story to some of my girls. I said, hey, I know a guy who's, you know, 6'4", six, 6'5", six, who had to play libero in the national championship game after being an outside his whole career. And they always look at me like, you're full of shit. And right now on the women's national team, um, Megan Courtney was, a, was an All-American outside hitter her whole career and fantastic player. And now she's she's growing it up for the U.S. team. So it's it's so much more common now, I think. But, Chris, while we have you on, I want to talk about stats a little bit. You and I have been statting one specific stat this whole NBA season so far. I want to talk to the world about it because it's definitely uh, – a good argumentative piece, and it's also one of those ones that you and I have observed. You're talking bigs from the back row. Yeah, yeah. So or from, from my out of system pass. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> it started because we were at a gold medal gold medal squared uh, coaches clinic at the AC Invitational. They had mentioned that it's statistically the worst option as a, an out of system play. They, say they were so, adamant about that. Run the pipe out of system. Any Don't. back row. Okay. No, no, no. It was it was pipe specifically. Oh, it was just pipe. Don't yeah. run the pipe out of system. D balls are fine, but not pipe. The whole next day, anytime it came up where we ran a pipe out of system, Justin and I, and we weren't successful. Justin and I looked at each other and we we're like, there it is again. <laughs> they told us. When the setter digs the first ball and the Libro is setting the second ball, every time they set the pipe, I would find myself at juniors tournaments and NBA events yelling, that's not going to work. <laughs> <laughs> right now for Team Freedom Volleyball Club, at tournaments, it's uh, probably less than 10% of the time <laughs> out of system running the big works. I actually said to our Libro, John Cunningham, I said, hey, out of system, you got to go outside or right side. So we started chucking balls across the court <laughs> ahead on the right side. Balls that should not be chucked 40 <laughs> feet away. And we're chucking right side balls. And I'm thinking in my head, like, I think a pipe might have been a better option. <laughs> Before we do this game, Ryan has a 2008 trivia question. Let's go with it and see if Chris knows. A little bit of indoor knowledge. In 2008, United States men, they won a gold medal in Beijing. Yeah. Can you name five players on that roster? Maybe. Uh, Lloyd Ball, um, David Correct. Lee. Correct. Um, Clay Stanley. <sighs> that other middle, I think his name was Smith. Um, David Smith. David um, Smith was not yet on the team. Okay, okay. Do mess ups count against me, or am no. I good? <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, all right, all right. Dave, Reed give pretty. it an X. He said Dave Smith, Dave. Reed Pretty, obviously. Reed Pretty, uh, that's number four. Good. I don't know who was living at the time. Um, oh, come on. He's in. The, he's a coach on the AVP now. Oh, I can picture him. Hips! Hips! I know who the other middle is because he plays in the NBA, and I know him. What the heck? Garrett's got it. I think Garrett's got it. Chris, do you want a lifeline? Or do you <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. This is killing me. You give me like, ah. Uh, you got four. You could, you're doing you could good. phone a friend. Tell him you're on Who Wants to Be a Millionaire. <laughs> Name like a fish that most people order when they order at restaurants. <laughs> <laughs> oh, right. Well, Riley Salmon. All right. Riley Salmon. That's correct. Yay! Yay! Yeah. Ryan Millar was a middle. I think you're thinking of um, – He's in the NBA right now, is what you said? Yeah. Russ, Russell, Russell Holmes. Russell, Russell Holmes, yeah. He oh, yeah. was on the team at the time. Ah, are you he sure? Was, nope. He was. No? Yeah, that was Ryan Millar, David Lee, Tom Hoff. Do you remember Tom Hoff? Tom Hoff. Correct. Oh, yeah. All right. I have the game. It's called Name the Opposite, and you have to try to name the opposite of everything I say as quick as you can. Okay. Love this. I'm going to try to enunciate as good as I can. As well as you can. As well as I can. <laughs> I figure it out. Salt. Salt. Uh, pepper. Red. Blue. Yes. Tall. Short. Big. Small. Cat. Dog. Alligator. Pigeon. <laughs> Libero. Middle. Saturday. Monday. Pasta. Steak. Water. <laughs> Alcohol. Hip hop. Jazz. Silver. Oh, dirt. Dr. Doolittle. <laughs> Shell Silverstein. Yeah, it's like the same thing. <laughs> Hard. Soft. Stop. Go. High. Low. Jump. Sit. Fast. Slow. Curve. Straight. Coffee. Can't say water again. Um, coffee. 
I don't know, man. Alcohol? Uh, <laughs> alcohol again. And then sleep. alcohol again. No, sorry. Sleep. Energy. <laughs> Good, answer. Good answer. Good answer. Good answer. I mean, awake would be obviously be the opposite. Energy came from my. I don't know. Like Justin said to me earlier, he said hi, and I think my answer was bye. <laughs> I said, I mean, said bye. I was like, all right. Before we let you go, Chris, I want you to just talk a little bit about the NBA, just kind of your expectations for the season, and, and uh, once it gets going, if it, if and when it gets going, just talk a little bit about the NBA and, and your role um, as one of the marquee players for Team Freedom. Right. So let's pretend coronavirus isn't a thing. Um, I am very excited to be balling with like some of the top players in the country. Um, it's just not something that I've always had a chance to do and any opportunity I can find, I'd go and do it. At this point, volleyball is not about the money for me. Um, although, you know, we're going to be paid a little bit. We're going to make some money. Going out and playing against the best players I can and the highest level of volleyball possible is what I'm really looking forward to. Because we are pressed for time and because we're in this extenuating circumstance, what do you think about the NBA running sort of just two weekends, all eight teams play in mini tournament style and then have a championship to follow those two weekends like what what format would you pick to make up for this lost time what would be your uh, your opinion I think there's two ways you can do this I think you can do it that way um or you can do a quick seeding tournament somehow and just have a single limb bracket from then on out cutting teams out of playoffs might be unfortunate for teams because they don't they won't have a lot of time to to you know show what they have so i don't know if i really want to cut anybody out of the chance of playoffs um i think everybody makes playoffs would be pretty cool and we're gonna we're gonna get a chance to hear from garrett the owner and manager of uh, northeast volleyball club which is which is interesting because we're gonna have a bunch of nba level uh players on here we're gonna talk a lot about professional volleyball in the united states and i'm really happy that cat's on because one of the things that we're going to try to do at least by next year is to add women to the NBA. This country is, is starving for that opportunity. And, and Garrett and I have talked about that for a long time. When you decided to go to Stevens, I don't think you could have imagined a professional league uh, being in the U S and that was, you know, four years ago, that was, you know, not that long ago. And now we're, we're talking about having a really cool opportunity. So from a team freedom standpoint, we love having you and, and it's been a pleasure. And, uh, and we loved having you on the show today. Hopefully, we can get you back on. And yeah, man. We can talk more beach stuff or snow stuff whenever yeah, you want. Man. You Definitely come know. back on. We're going to talk more AVP. We're going to talk more outdoor stuff. So please, if you'll come back on, we'd love to have you. I yes, think you're doing some good stuff here. It's it, I can listen to Justin talk all day long. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks a lot. Thanks, Chris. Take care, man. Thanks, Thanks,